Free software is the only software that's really worth using. But what is free software? It isn't software that has no price tag that you can just download for free, although this typically is the case with free software. It's software whose source code is open to the public, and as a result of this, the software doesn't do any kinds of nasty stuff like spy on you or hack your computer, because of course, somebody would see that it does that in the source code and they would post about it on Reddit for everybody to find out about. Now I could go on and on about the privacy reasons why you should use free software, because FANG and the government are literally tracking your every move, collecting so much data on you and your peers so that they can attempt to understand humans better than they understand themselves. And with this knowledge, combined with the wealth and power that they already have, they can accelerate shaping society into the way that they want it to be. But most people don't care about that. Most people say that they don't give a damn about privacy, even though they lock their doors at night and they don't talk to strangers or share all the things that they purchased with their credit cards. Online privacy just isn't that important to them for whatever reason. So I won't really focus on it, but there's more reasons to use free software beyond just the respect for privacy. With free software, it's often easier to get work done. Now, what do I mean by this? Before jumping into the rabbit hole of Linux OCD, I was a Windows user, and I think my love and hate of Windows has pretty much followed the same trajectory as most other millennials. I liked Windows XP, I didn't like Windows Vista, I liked Windows 7, and then everything after that is a complete dumpster fire that I hate with a passion. But why did this love and hate happen? So I wasn't really that hip to free software when Windows 8 or, you know, certainly not when Windows Vista came out. So that had nothing to do with my dislike of certain versions of Windows at the time. The main reason that I didn't like those OSs was change. And I don't mean changes under the hood to improve security and performance, even though that actually got worse with Windows Vista. I'm talking about user interface changes, the way that things looked and felt. So Windows Vista, it took away my blue taskbar and the rolling green hills of the Bliss wallpaper and 3D pipes, the most mesmerizing screensaver of all time. And it replaced it with this Windows arrow bullshit that lags my PC, some weird background that looks like a half-ass laser light show that's taking place underwater, and a screensaver that just looks like a bunch of drunk people on Tron bikes nearly missing each other endlessly in a black void. Every time a new version of Windows came out, I had to spend hours relearning the UI and learning where different context menus were and, and learning how to change things. Like why did Windows 10 have to create a whole additional settings menu besides the control panel? And I was a kid for most of these Windows releases, so learning it was a lot easier for me. I can only imagine how difficult it was for boomers who hadn't retired yet, uh, working in some office using Windows XP when all of a sudden you come in one day and you have to use Windows Vista. In fact, I was actually working at Geek Squad and met a lot of boomers who were new to Windows 10 and they really struggled with learning it. And some of these people had been using computers since before I was even born. Oftentimes, they were people that worked in the finance industry. Uh, they were good at what they did, but they just couldn't learn how to navigate new versions of Windows or new versions of Microsoft Excel because everything was moved around on them. Free software doesn't have this kind of problem because it can always be forked. You know, sure, the user interface of the mainline version, it might have some change throughout the year, but in almost every case, you can find someone who is maintaining a version updated with the under the hood stuff, uh, but it still has the old UI. And this is often the case with free software. Uh, you can rice it to look exactly how you want it to because they make the UI and all the stuff under the hood separate. In Microsoft, if Microsoft Windows was free software like GNU slash Linux, we would probably see XP, Vista, Windows 7, Windows 2000, and even versions before that still being used in the wild 
they would probably all have the same core code under the hood and be able to more or less uh, run the same kinds of programs with the same kind of functionality, just like we see with different Linux distros, but you would be able to switch the look and feel just as easily as you could on Linux so that your grandma could go on using something that looks like Windows 95. Um, you know, she would know how to navigate it. She would know how to do everything in it, but you wouldn't have to worry about her getting hacked because she's using an OS that's 20 years outdated. The main reason to use free software is that you actually have control over it and you have control over the project, even if you aren't a programmer. And I wanna make that very clear, that programmers, they aren't the only ones who have a say in what direction free software goes. Of course, they can fork projects themselves, but you can vote with your dollar and it actually matters. Like with giant corporations like Microsoft, you can't really amass enough wealth to try and affect the development of their projects. You know, you might say, hey, I'll buy a million licenses of Windows 10 if you just change this teeny tiny thing in your UI, uh, but they're not gonna do it. Most free software is crowdfunded though, so you can really have an impact with your dollar if you were to donate to a project and the devs are willing to take outside opinions into consideration, or if you become one of their top donators, they're probably gonna listen to you if you ask them to do something a certain way. Uh, and of course, you don't necessarily have to speak with your money behind you. You could just email the devs directly uh, what you wanna see out of their projects, and it's up to them whether or not to take that into consideration, but there's been plenty of cases where just a handful of people asked for something to be added into a software project, and the devs went ahead and did it. Now that isn't the case with most corporate software, where the devs are basically just code monkeys that are designing things the way that management wants. And that's really the reason why proprietary software has gotten so bad over the years. You know, back in the 90s, a lot of proprietary software was pretty good. NT4, Visual Studio, they didn't really have a spyware component built into them back then, but that was because corporations were still figuring out how computers and the internet worked. You know, now with Windows 10, there's a whole lot of bloat and things are hyper monetized with ads in your start menu and your browser and data is constantly being sent back to Microsoft over telemetry because corporations, they've got it figured out and they're gonna do what they were designed to do, which is maximize their profits. So don't fall for any of the proprietary software copes like, oh, I need a Mac or Windows because that's what I'm used to. That literally isn't even true. I mean, like I said, they change the UI whenever the hell they feel like it. So even if you might very well be used to it how it is right now, that's not going to last very long. Or, oh, I need to use Windows because this specific program that I need to use just doesn't work on Linux. Most of the time, this isn't true either. Um, there is very well may be a better FOSS alternative to the proprietary program you use, you're using. It might not be exactly the same, but you might find that once you, you know, relearn, once you basically get out of this institutionalized system of using all of the software made by proprietors and start using free software alternatives, uh, that you're able to do the same work you were doing on Windows or Mac OS even more efficiently. Most distros have tens of thousands of packages in their repositories, and it's really come a long way. Now, I know that someone's gonna say, oh, I need to use this specific tool that is only available in Adobe Premiere or Photoshop or some other proprietary program that only works on Windows or Mac OS. Um, so I guess it is necessary for them to use some proprietary software, but why not dual boot or run a VM for those specific use cases, right? Why give all of your data and why go through all of the suffering of the user experience of Windows 10 just for something that you're probably gonna spend a few minutes on each day? So that's what it really boils down to. Even if you haven't been red-pilled on privacy and you don't care about the ethical issues, you owe it to yourself to try free software so that you can at least have a say in the future of the software that you use and stop having your time wasted by the bloat and unnecessary complexity that corporations put into their software.